In this demo, I am taking an old acrylic pour that I had, and I love the colours on it, and I decided I wanted to add a painting of Horsey Wind Pump. So I'm starting out with a little bit of ink. I've done a bit of drawing, so I know where my where the, the windmill is actually going to go, and where the landscape is going to go. So it's just a case of just starting to put some colour down. I'm trying to keep the whole thing very loose, spraying with some water, just, just keeping it very simple. And picking up on the colours at the moment that are actually both in the landscape and in the pour. This was from a Troubling Brush Dippers episode, so I'll put the link to that episode in the, in the show notes. Do go and have a look at that. Sharon and I had a lovely wander around the mill. It was fabulous. So what I had put down there was some watercolour ink. So I'm going to come in with some acrylic now and start building the mill itself. It's going to take a couple of layers. And whilst I've got the colour on the brush, I shall do the reflection. Reflection is usually just slightly darker, but I can always glaze over that in a bit. And I also need some dark to go along the edge of the canal, the water. Um, there is a reflection to that. going to dry that little bit off. So I've now got the structure of where the waterway is going to go, where the wind popping is going to go, uh, and I needed to start building the painting. And I'm painting both the sky and the reflection at the same time here. I'm using acrylic paint and I've got a mixture of ultramarine, phthalo blue and white. I'm quite keen not to get rid of all of the acrylic pour that was underneath so this is going to be a little bit of push and pull here. The 
fading out those edges. I'm continuously building that reflection at the same time as I go through. See my brush strokes are going in lots and lots of different directions, so trying to keep the, the marks nice and random. putting on lots of water so it fades away at the bottom. Of course I can't help but get my hands involved. Just needed a bit of clean water. One of the things about this Telio paint is you can re-wet it so I can rub some of it back and get this quite interesting textures of that other colour and the other paint showing through. trees and stuff behind the mill. I'm going to make it quite blue, quite a deep blue. There are some right off to the edge that show a bit more and I'm going to concertina in and put those in because I quite like those ones there. I'm going to put them in about here. Again this is going to take a couple of layers I think to cover because I've done this as an acrylic pour it's got a slightly odd surface to it. a bit more of this to build up the shadow along here whilst I've got it. This was pre-season, so this was before we had a whole lot of colour in these trees, so I still want it to be bluer. <laughs>
same colour. I'm just coming in with a round brush now just to add some detail. So here I'm actually lifting some paint out again just to make some more break in the tree so you can see through the branches of that tree and I've just added a, a little more detail into those branches. I'm just going to add another layer onto the tower of the windmill itself. Again, this is just all about building layers, building texture, building strength of, of, of paint. There are some places I don't mind covering over that background colour and some places I wanted to leave it visible. very easy to lose yourself in these details and I, I have to say I just you know concentrate and I'm looking close putting the reflection in putting in the tower um, I'm having a great time I hope you're enjoying watching it after this it's time just to sit back have a little look and decide where I'm going with this just take a few minutes so I just went and made a little change I felt this was getting too literal up here so I just went down stuck it under the sink and just scrubbed at it with a scourer and I've taken because this paint re-wets I've taken most of that that paint out and I just think it's a bit less literal. I'm happier. Not happy yet, but happier. Right, so now let's go back to the mill wind pump. Try and do these layers together because then they'll be the same colour.
sometimes you just need to stand back and take a little look and see what you think. When putting some details into a painting, uh, whether it be these sails on the, the wind pump or whether it would be masts on a boat, all of those kind of things, I, I often end up using a pencil because one, you can move it much easier, but two, it gives you a thinner line so you don't end up overworking it, it doesn't get too heavy. So. I quite like drawing back into work afterwards. I also quite like the drawn mark. So, so sometimes um, on this one I'll put some paint marks into it, I'm sure, but I may well just leave them as, as drawn sails, um, and that's okay too. Just measuring to try and get the reflection beneath the mill itself, directly below. Not always easy, not always easy. not visible there.
So following on from doing the drawing with a pencil, I'm now coming in with a black pen just to mark up some of the areas with, with pen. Um, again, just quite like the drawn mark sometimes and sometimes it's, it's great for detail, particularly on a painting like this that, that isn't a traditional overall landscape. So having drawn it in sufficiently, I can now come in, I'm just using some white paint here just to put a few highlights onto those sails uh, and just lift it a little bit. It's quite difficult to see, but it does add to the overall effect. You do sometimes need to put a couple of layers of white on with acrylics just to get it to really show against a darker yeah. background.
starting to add some extra colour and some extra detail into the grasses along the water's edge. And when my reference was taken, this was quite a wintry scene. It was all dried grasses. So I have upped the colour a little bit from the, the reference that I had, um, but still keeping it fairly simple. Adding a little more detail now into the buildings that run along behind and beside the mill. Uh, there is a couple of buildings, there's certainly a cafe along the back there and a couple of huts where pumps have been and motors and things like that. So there's a few little buildings behind there. It just adds to the, to the detail and the interest in the painting. So here I'm using my paint roller and this is a wallpaper seam roller but I'm only actually putting paint on the very corner of it and this is going to give me uh, some nice sort of sharp lines for my reeds, for the base of my reeds. So I'm going to come in and put those in, it's literally just paint on the corner edge. It's a lovely tool for giving some nice broken marks. just coming in with a brush to smudge, join a few of them together but also make it so that there's a mixture of marks going on there.
Now I'm going to use a fine brush uh, and I'm just pulling away from those streaks that I made with the paint roller uh, and making the fronds on the top of these reeds and grasses. When you're painting things like reeds and grasses, you do need to make sure that your, your marks go in lots of different directions. Nature is quite untidy and quite messy, and you do have this tendency to try and neaten everything up. Um, but you shouldn't. You should make some go up, some go down, some be broken, and that's all adding to the natural elements that we, we're going to be trying to include in our paintings. It's adding all of these final details that um, that make the difference but my intention on this was to try and not to lose all of that original acrylic pour and have the painting be a combination of the two styles of painting have one emerging from the other and uh, I've loved doing it so I hope you've enjoyed watching do go and have a look at the full episode of the traveling brush dippers uh, on our visit for Sharon and I too here we've been there a couple of times um, and thank you very much for watching.